Welcome to Think Tech on OC16, Hawaii's weekly newscast on things that matter to tech and to Hawaii. I'm Jay Fidel. And I'm Jean Giuliano. In our show tonight, we'll cover why this 4th of July may be different and what it means to Hawaii and the country now 236 years after the founding of the Republic. To get a handle on things, we talk to people who are active in our community, but who have also shown their patriotism in the course of military service. Join us tonight as we explore why they care so much about the Fourth, why they feel this Fourth may be different from those in the past, and what it should mean to us and to the country. So we thought we'd visit with five giants in leadership, leaders in our community and our country, all of whom have shown their patriotism through military service. That is former Governor George Ariyoshi, Ralph Kosa, leader of Pacific Forum of the Center for Strategic and International Studies, Hank Stackpole, a famous retired Marine General, Zaps Latiber, a trustee of the Campbell Estate and a retired Navy Admiral, Dan Leaf, leader of the Asia Pacific Center for Security Studies and a retired Air Force General. David Day has been producer and interviewer for this special Think Tech 4th of July show. We wanted to create a production for you this 4th of July so that you could really get into the heart of some, some American leaders who have served in our military uh, and who perhaps have a unique perspective on what the 4th of July is all about. started by discussion with former Governor George Ariyoshi, three-term governor of Hawaii and longtime chair of the East-West Center, who began his career as a military interpreter in Japan in 1944. When I was in the occupation force in Japan and I looked at what was happening, a country devastated, but America was not interested in getting into spoils of war, but they wanted to see that community develop, put in a, a constitution put together by MacArthur and his group, and that constitution today remains the constitution of Japan. Japan was not a democratic country at that time, but Japan has become a, a democratic country today. When I was there and I saw this happening and uh, America doing what they were doing in Japan, I became a very proud American. I became very proud of the fact what kind of country we are. And we're not a country that always correct. We make mistakes, but the notion, idea of what we're trying to do, what the country wants to do, is be a free democratic nation and wanting many other nations to become like us succeed to some extent, succeed, absolutely succeed in Japan, but not maybe succeed as well elsewhere, but still pushing, pushing, trying to see that every person, so that the people, no matter where they live, can live a life of dignity. And I think that's what America represents to me. Anytime I travel, I think about how nice a country we have, how grateful we are, with all the faults and all the imperfections that we have today, that we can have a country that protects the rights of every individual to become what he or she wants to become. Thank you, Governor. We went on to Ralph Kosa, President of Pacific Forum of the Center for Strategic and International Studies, an award-winning international think tank with an office here in Honolulu. Ralph Kosa has had a distinguished career as an Air Force intelligence officer. Well, Fourth of July to me is sort of a, a day of Thanksgiving. Uh, you know, in the fall we have Thanksgiving on sort of a personal family basis, but I think Fourth of July is, is sort of like Thanksgiving for the nation. You know, last year I spent 240 days traveling 18 different countries, some free, a lot of them not so free. Uh, and when you have an opportunity to sort of compare uh, what it's like living in the United States compared to what it's living like in many other countries of the world, uh, you really have to take pause and just be thankful that uh, you were lucky enough. Uh, I was lucky enough that my grandparents were brave enough to cross the you know, Atlantic Ocean and, and settle in the United States. Interesting. What makes this particular Fourth of July different from all others? Well, this one will be different for me from all others because I'll be in East Timor. Uh, I'll be getting training to, in three days after the 4th of July, to be out in some village in East Timor monitoring their elections. And that to me is sort of exciting. This is, you know, American democracy flourishing in, in other areas of the world. And, and to be able to sort of take part of that uh, and just at that particular 
at that particular timing, I think it's, it's very exciting. In the past 20 years or so, I've seen democracy, you know, arrive in Taiwan, in South Korea, in the Philippines. Uh, we watched it. I was very active participating with Mongolians when they made their transition. And now watching another country sort of move uh, in, in that direction, it's really exciting. And it sort of reminds you of what our, our founding fathers had in mind and how it's a good idea that's still catching on. What do you think the 4th of July should mean to the people of Hawaii and to the people of this country? Well, I think it's, it's a sort of a time to restore our faith in ourselves. Uh, I, I personally, and I know a lot of people are, you know, somewhat depressed when you watch how, you know, politically incompetent some of our leaders have become and, and the stalemates and the stagnation in, in Washington. Right, and right. You sort of lose sight of the fact that, you know, our, our system is the worst possible system except for all others. Uh, and, you know, we, I think it's a time that we ought to, you know, look back and say, well, you know, it's still not perfect. It's still a work in progress. You know, 200 years, we still haven't gotten it right but it's pretty pretty good and and we got to keep working on it and not, not lose faith in it and that's sort of my message to myself and i hope my message to to others is let's you know let's not let our founding fathers down if you will but let's let's keep making this process work because believe me having watched uh, the way the world works in a lot of other places we're very very lucky then we talked with Hank Stackpole, the now retired founder of the Asia Pacific Center for Security Studies in Honolulu, and who was a much decorated and admired Marine general, seriously wounded in the Vietnam War. The 4th of July is uh, something that really is a celebration. We have a celebration that I think is probably the largest, the noisiest, and the happiest in the world. And that's what it's all about. Uh, there's, for kids, they're getting an idea that that flag means something. And along with fireworks and everything else, it causes them to remember. They remember. And seeing all those flags uh, out there of this country, and that flag is, is wonderful. I've seen it everywhere. I've been on the top of Suribachi where it was put, as you know, in 1945 in World War II. And it uh, gives me chills every time I see that. The stripes, the stars, it says that we're states. It says how we started. And it's a story completely in that flag. And that's the thing that we are celebrating. We're honoring our country. There is an oath that the president takes and officers and enlisted who are in the military and others who are in federal positions. They have to take it. And I always used to take it out and remind every Marine that I was honored to lead that remember you have to renew your obligation. Please listen to this. I do solemnly swear, and we're looking at the flag at that time, I do solemnly swear that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against enemies foreign and domestic, and that I will bear truth, faith, and allegiance to the same that I take this obligation freely without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. And I will well and faithfully discharge the office upon which I am about to enter. And you might not know, but the last sentence is, so help me God. You don't have to be in the military, all you have to do is look at that flag and say, I am an American. Do you see this 4th of July as being different than any other? I believe that uh, this one is, is a very, very important for us. And it's because we're in a different world than we've known in the past. With the electronic ways of talking, it's not good communication. There's too much static, too much noise. And a lot of people use it to put out untruths. And then we have 
people throwing balls of fire at each other instead of saying, what can we do for the country? We are a nation under the rule of law. We can go out and have the parties and the, uh, the, all of the joy uh, knowing that we're safe. We know that we have a country that tries to provide a life that is without fear. Now that's a big thing. I've gone to, uh, to a number of uh, cemeteries. I've seen Normandy in thousands. Uh, and we have our own 40,000 plus here in the cemetery here at uh, the National Pacific Memorial Punch Bowl. And every time I go there, uh, like I'm feeling right now, for people who gave their lives, and that's the thing about our military, uh, it was my career, so you can expect me to be have a bias, but when you take that oath, I said, and then put your signature down, that is your life that you have just put down. And that takes a lot. We also spoke with Zaps Latiper, most recently a trustee of the Campbell Estate, and formerly a Navy aviator and seagoing admiral who served here in Hawaii and around the world, and who distinguished himself in the Gulf War. 236 years ago, 56 men signed a, a document, and then they said that all men were endowed by God and nature, not by government, with fundamental inalienable rights, and that those, those governments that came into existence were brought into existence by the people. And so we have 56 people, 13 colonies that at that time said, we don't like the government that's been imposed on us from overseas, and therefore we declare that the government that we're going to create is to serve the people and to make sure that those rights are protected. That was immediately followed by several years of fighting. Those men and women in the militias that were the predecessors to our military today enabled this freedom that we're going to celebrate this year on July 4th. The 4th of July is a celebration. It's the longest standing uh, federal holiday. It's one that touches all of us across history. And it's one that really is more significant to those in uniform than I think any others that we have during the year. Is there anything that's, that you see uh, that is special or different about this, this year's 4th of July? Uh, I, I always uh, go down to Waikiki with my wife. The thing that always strikes me, and I suspect it'll strike me again this year, is the applause that all the units as they go by get from citizens that don't even think about the military. And, and we are more attuned to the armed services services here in Hawaii than almost any of the other states. And yet, even then, we, we often forget the sacrifices that these young men and women make. On the 4th of July, when you see them in uniform, you remember freedom's not free. It takes a, a great, it costs money, it costs lives, it costs uh, the commitment and service of young men and women. So uh, what's special about this year is that it's going to be this year and it'll be probably be better than last year. I'm, I'm your basic optimist. What does the 4th of July mean to you? I've had a chance now to live all over the world, to see all types of civilizations and, and cultures. But I sit down and I think there are 300 million of us that are Americans and are blessed in you know, 1 20th of the world. And, and I, the 4th of July, uh, every year I sit back and think about the fact how blessed I am to be one of the 5% and to, to live where opportunity is limited only by what you strive to do, how hard you want to work, how much education you want to do. And, and that's what the 4th of July sort of brings forth in me every year when I think about it. I, I personally have celebrated 4th of July's all over the world. I have to tell you, the most significant 4th of July I've ever spent was in to July 4th, 1965. 1965. 1965. Where were you in 1965? I was a, a pilot, a, a lieutenant pilot in uh, out of Norfolk, Virginia. And what had happened was a, a squadron had lost an airplane in Vietnam and they needed to have a replacement airplane. I flew an A6 intruder from Norfolk, Virginia to San Francisco, uh, California, where, where then somebody else picked it up and took it the rest of the way back on July 4th. I took off at 8 p.m. on July 4th, flew across country, landed in San Francisco at 10 p.m. their time. And so I went across the U.S. 
as the entire United States of America, every city shot off its fireworks. And there I was on a clear July night, just watching left, right, and front and back, all the way across the country, I watched fireworks. Very dramatic, very high impact. Uh, it would have been a bucket list event for me if I knew you could have things like that be on a bucket list, but it was very spectacular and very uh, awe-inspiring to me because I said the whole country was together on this one event. They all celebrated from Norfolk, Virginia, through Chicago, through Des Moines, right through Oklahoma City, Salt Lake, right to San Francisco. Everybody was uh, involved in celebrating the 4th of July. Finally, we met with Dan Leaf, the current leader of the Asia Pacific Center for Security Studies and a retired Air Force general. What does the 4th of July mean to you? When I think of the 4th of July, the first thing that comes to mind is sunshine because I remember the hot, sunny days in Wisconsin and it seemed like the 4th was always kind of brutally hot but clear and, and free of the thunderstorms that tended to happen at that time of year. So I just that, that is an image that sort of frames the rest of my consideration of the 4th. And from there it gets a little more serious. I think about what it means, what it meant for the colonies to declare their independence and the series of grievances that, that led to the signing of the Declaration of Independence, what it's meant for our nation, what, what the independence of the United States has meant to mankind. Well, why is this 4th of July maybe different from all others? It, uh, it isn't particularly different, I don't think, for our nation. For me, it's a little different because I'm in a new role uh, as a director of APCSS, the Asia Pacific Center for Security Studies. Uh, and for me, that sort of brings closure to the notion of the Declaration of Independence. If you reread it, and I commend your audience to do that, it is a remarkable document. It's a statement of grievances against the king. It is not a bellicose document. It isn't, it, it isn't as angry as it is resigned to the need for independence to achieve their God-given rights for the people of the then colonies to achieve their God-given rights. And it expresses frustration with the need to take it this far and the need to go to war, but also talks to peace and that in peace they will remain, that the, the people of Britain will become friends again. Um, as, a, as a uniformed service member, I prepared for and participated in combat. Uh, sometimes that's necessary. That's unfortunately the nature of human existence. Uh, but obviously I prefer peace and now I'm in a role at Asia Pacific Center for Security Studies where our business is peace through better understanding of our regional uh, allies, partners, and others. Uh, through uh, more uh, comprehensive understanding of national security practices and how each nation does that. And by building the capacity, not just of other nations, but of our nation, na nation to resolve conflicts before they become conflict, before they become war. And so for me, this Independence Day, I'm getting to the bottom of the document and getting back to sort of practicing peace. and as an American who, who has such great um, admiration for our founding fathers and the nature of the government that they envisioned, uh, that, that feels pretty good, frankly. What do you think the 4th of July should mean to the people of Hawaii or to the American people generally going forward? Um, first of all, I think we should all be pretty doggone grateful. It's turned out the way it, it, it did, and I think that there's a definitely a place for Thanksgiving and that this isn't like Memorial Day well, where we thank those who made the ultimate sacrifice or Veterans Day where we generally thank uh, veterans of military service or Mother's or Father's Day where we honor our parents. Uh, it's more for a general thanks to the, the nature of the Republic that we are privileged to reside in and, and for Hawaii last state to enter that republic, that union, um, I'm sure it causes for some some, uh, you know, some mixed reflection on Hawaii and things Hawaiian and, and being part of the United States, but in total, for all of us, I think it's been a great blessing. I think it's been a great blessing for the world. It's hard to imagine the 20th century and how that would have turned out without the power and the will of the American people. Um, 
uh, at, at the same time, I think we ought to reflect all of us in Hawaii and elsewhere on the, the value of peace and uh, the high standard that should be applied to choosing to go to war. That, you know, this, the, this document, to read this document again, um, you'll get a sense of the conflicted conclusion of the signers, that this was not an easy choice, and, and that there were fundamental values of risk, and, uh, it, and it's something that should guide us in, in how we lead our daily lives as individuals and how we conduct ourselves as a nation. It was chicken skin talking with these dedicated leaders, all so patriotic, with such strong feelings about America and the 4th of July. We hope their words resound for you as they resound for us. This is my daughter, Lauren. What's your take on the 4th of July? For me, the 4th of July basically represents the reason I can be here today and I can speak out and I have rights. We have in front of us here, Lauren, this, this uh, reproduction of the Declaration of Independence. A lot of people probably don't exactly understand what all of it means. Some of the lines that are important are all men are created equal. The 4th of July, a lot of people don't really appreciate. But at the same time, you should celebrate the fact that we all have rights. It's important. It's, it's a day to be happy. Everybody should just appreciate and realize why you can go out to the beach and be free. You know, when I go away and graduate from school or wherever I go, being in the United States because of this document, my life, my fortune, and my sacred honor will always be protected. We hope you have a fabulous Fourth of July. We are left with the welling sense of involvement and patriotism, and we want to share it with you. Let us all celebrate our freedom and the success of our great nation over all these years. Now, let's take a look at our ThinkTech calendar of events going forward. ThinkTech's 4 to 5 p.m. weekday drive time radio series on KGU 760 AM continues this week, covering business, Asia, tech, energy, the arts, and government. Tune in to 760 AM every weekday at 4 p.m. and raise your awareness on ThinkTech Radio. On July 26th, the Hawaii Venture Capital Association and ThinkTech will present a luncheon panel program called Filmmaking in Hawaii, The Legacy of the Descendants. Get it? In which a number of speakers and panelists will cover the status and growth of the film industry in Hawaii, the challenges involved, and what it looks like for the future. Sign up for these programs on hvca.org. And here's our co-working entrepreneurs. Rachang Fujihira and Tony Stanford to keep us current on their latest adventures at the Box Jelly. Yes, this week has been uh, a true trying and exciting times. Monday at 8 in the morning, we lost one of our anchor tenants. It's true. It was sad. Very sad. But it's okay. We were able to reevaluate and move forward, but we also did, we started the build out also. Yes, so. you got the build out going we have the right now we have frames being put up there's electrical work being done mm -hmm. there's drilling through walls there is pipes being laid here for stuff i don't even know what but it makes it, they say it makes sense absolutely so it's 
been really exciting. We've changed the plan a few times, but we've been able to accommodate the, some of the people we lost, but yeah, been able to add more to the value to the other people that stayed. So we're actually doing a full cafe experience, a full coffee experience. It looks like that's what's in the works. So we've been able to redo um, the Paligao to be able to maximize the natural light through the place. And in and, and the next week's time, you know, we should have drywall. Yeah, I think that this is a space that um, will definitely be something that isn't found in other places on the islands, and people will enjoy it a lot. We, with what we're making, we always keep in our heads is like, what, do we can, what we are doing here is not what you can find at the home, at the coffee shop, at your normal office, but have those amenities as well. But the little bit more. What is that little bit more? And that's what we've been looking to cater to. Everything down to the, the polygal glass walls, down to the coffee experience. To the Nest thermostat. To the Nest thermostat, yes. So we've been working with AC. We're bringing in 10 tons of cold air. 10 tons of cold air. 10 tons. It's going to be freezing in there. I don't care if it's summer. It's going to be cold. It's going to be a cold summer. We'll be right back to wrap up this week's edition of Think Tech, but first we want to thank our underwriters. Thanks to the Scheidler Family Foundation, which supports a number of educational, cultural, and charitable organizations, including Think Tech. Hawaiian Electric Company and its affiliates, Miko on Maui and Helco on the Big Island, are deeply committed to the communities they serve. Galen Ho is a senior executive of BAE Systems, a global defense, security, and aerospace company, and CEO of CBI Polymers, a tech company in Hawaii. The High Tech Development Corporation, HTDC, the leading tech agency in our state, attached to the Department of Business, Economic Development, and Tourism. Okay, Gene, that wraps up this week's edition of ThinkTech. Remember, you can watch Think Tech on OC16 several times every week. Can't get enough of it, just like Gene does. For additional times, check out OC16.tv. You bet, Jay. For lots more Think Tech videos and for underwriting and sponsorship opportunities on Think Tech on OC16, visit thinktechhawaii.com. Be a sponsor or a volunteer and help us reach Hawaii. I'm Jay Fidel. Thanks so much for joining us on Think Tech. You can watch this show throughout the week and tune in next Sunday evening for our next important weekly episode. In the meantime, happy 4th of July. I'm Jean Giuliano. Happy 4th of July, everyone.